Unsane is a 2018 film by acclaimed director Steven Soderbergh in his second film after his return from retirement. This film once again showcases Soderbergh's ingenuity as a director for better or worse, this time in the form of an iPhone. Soderbergh and crew shot the entire film on an iPhone 7 Plus with just a couple of additional lenses. This film stars the crown's Claire Foy as Sawyer Valentini. Supporting staff includes Joshua Leonard of Blair Witch Project fame, Jay Farrow, and Juno Temple. The story opens with Sawyer being impeded upon by a white male executive in her new office in Pennsylvania. We learn that she has relocated from Boston to Pennsylvania and her family isn't quite sure why. After dodging her boss's trajectory, Sawyer heads out for a quick lunch and a phone call with mom that reveals a little bit about her past. Afterwards, she ends up on a night out on the town where we learn just a little bit more about the psyche of this character, Sawyer Valentini, and we come to learn that she was stalked two years ago in Boston by a mysterious man that we don't know anything about. Thusly, Sawyer ends up looking for help on Google of where a person who has dealt with a stalker in the past and has a little bit of PTSD can go for some guidance or help or comfort. She finds herself ending up at a hospital chatting with a psychiatrist who promptly asks her to sign a little bit of standard paperwork that Sawyer doesn't read the fine print on and ends up inadvertently checking herself in as a psychiatric ward patient and being held against her will. Unsane does a great job of getting inside of your head and leaving you feeling tense and trapped. The use of a camera that we see nearly everything on these days, Instagram, Facebook, everything that's being shared amongst the internet, makes this film feel really real and that adds to the frightening element of this anxiety runs high as we try and unravel the mysteries of the hospital and the tension in the film rises rapidly as Sawyer finds herself inside this hospital she begins to see or not see the man who stalked her two years ago and we as an audience begin to wonder just what is real here the film does a great job of poking a few jabs at our continued use of cell phones in today's society while shooting the entire film on a cell phone. Though the cinematography does come off a bit gimmicky and dodgy. Shooting the entire film on an iPhone sounds really cool until you see it. Oftentimes it does aid the narrative of the tale, but sometimes it comes off looking a little cheesy and cheap. Some lens flares that take place shooting on an iPhone don't apply as great to the big silver screen as one might imagine they would. If you shot this film on 35 millimeter, I actually think it would come out a little bit better. It might not get the same recognition, and you definitely couldn't do it for simply $1 million as Soderbergh did this one for, but I think it would look better. Soderbergh claims that this method of filming is a game changer for the industry. And I don't necessarily agree with this, and I think that maybe it was a game changer on set as he and Joshua Leonard have both gone on record saying, it was really easy to shoot and engage in this film being on set without a big crew or uh, film equipment everywhere on set, uh, the actors were able to slip into the personas a little bit better, and you do see that in the film. And Soderbergh says that his ease of simply taking an idea from mind and putting it directly onto film with the click of a button changed the way that he is gonna make films from here on out. I think that you can get away with it with Unsane. I do not think that this is a palpable and executable format for future filmmaking. But I digress. The performances worked really well here with Claire Foy from The Crown really carrying the performance as Sawyer Valentini, a role she really had no trouble sinking directly into, it seems. The realness and grittiness of her character feels relatable and therefore we almost feel like we're in there with her discovering things at the same time as she is. We connect with the character of Sawyer and we feel for her and as her tension and anxiety rise, so does ours, albeit her continuous bad decision making. Stop hitting her, Claire! What? We find ourselves yelling over and over again at the screen as his character makes terrible decisions. Although I came to find that I believe most of that is her character arc, or lack thereof, that is supposed to propel the story a little bit further. Makeup here is minimal, and costumes are pretty much just baggy sweatpants and oversized polo shirts and sweaters, which really work for the continuity of the story and the setting. Speaking of setting, the setting is mostly sterile hospital rooms, with only a restaurant and a hiking trail providing alternate takes. The hospital looks like it hasn't been updated since 1980, and nothing more is really needed here. Overall, we spend almost all of our time in these lurking, damp, smoke 
quote, stained hospital settings. The soundtrack to the movie doesn't exist as there's basically no music or score whatsoever in this. There's a couple moments of a little bit of musicality, but ultimately the film feels very sparse in that and probably part of why the film only cost $1 million to make, but it aids here and does a great job of feeling really real. You never feel comfortable and a permanent residence on the edge of your seat is necessary for Unseen. Now a few nitpicks do arise during a viewing and you will find yourself sort of questioning just why Steven Soderbergh decided to put this particular reveal smack dab in the center of the movie. I do think that the narrative would have been aided if he waited until the end to provide the reveal that you are going to get. I think that this does detract from the third act just a little bit, though I didn't find it necessarily enough for me to turn off and walk out of the movie. I didn't hate it that much, but it really could have been a better trope if upheld until the end of the film, and I think Soderbergh has a missed opportunity here by revealing what he reveals halfway through. Film gets a bonus half point for one of my favorite actors in American history. Matt Damon pops up halfway through this film, to my delight. Overall, Insane is a devilishly good psychological thriller, and I think that if you really like a good mind game, you're definitely going to enjoy this one. I would recommend it to anybody who's not going out to see Ready Player One this weekend, though I would question your sanity. I think you'll get a good kick out of Unsane, guys. It's getting a 7.5 out of 10 couch score for me, guys. Definitely aided by that bonus point from Mr. Damon. All right, guys, that's it for me. Now I want to turn it over to you. Hop into that comment section and let me know what you thought of Unsane. Have you gotten a chance to check this one out yet? Be sure to click any of the links in the description of this video to follow me on various social media platforms. A couple that I want to highlight here though are Letterboxd. I'm on there now rating and reviewing the latest films that I see. So be sure to follow me on Letterboxd. Also, check out Stardust app. I'm on there. I just started. Please be sure to at me in some of your video reactions. I'd love to hear what you guys are saying about some movies that I'm reviewing. Click subscribe so you never miss a video from my brown couch. At the end of this video, if you feel so compelled, be sure to click either of the two links that appear to check out some of my previous videos, movies, reviews, trailer reactions, whatever you want. I'm going to do it here on this channel. Thank you guys. My name is George Crow. This is Brown Couch. I will see you guys next time.